All right, guys, today I'm going to show you how to glaze your tile. This is the fifth bathroom that I've glazed before. It's a great sort of way to give a facelift. As long as your tile is in good shape, you can change its color this way. I've used this before on bathtubs, but today I'm going to skip the tub. It's in good shape. I'm just going to focus on the walls of the bathroom and the shower. I'm going to use this Rust-Oleum tub and tile kit. Um, this is the fifth bathroom that I've used it on. It does a really amazing job of going over at your bathtub or your tile and glazing it. So it's safer than using paint. You don't want to paint your tile. You want to actually use this acrylic epoxy that will create that same glaze finish that your tile already has on it. Um, so this one, even though it's white, you'll see the Rust-Oleum is a really bright white. So I'm going to end up having to do all of the tile for it. But that's fine. I think it's really going to pop and make it look all nice and fresh in here. So to do your Rust-Oleum, first one you do, you want to really scrub and clean um, your surfaces of your tile with, um, they suggest Comet, something a little bit abrasive, really making sure you get any dirt and grime. And then you want to go around and remove the caulk that is around your bathtub. Um, last thing you want to do is sand it with sandpaper just to kind of scuff up the tile a little bit and then you want to wipe that down and let it all air dry for about an hour and then you can get going so really it's a lot of prep but once you get this going and mixed up it's just kind of like rolling on paint it's really not that hard it is quite fumy so the things I've got here I've got a ventilation mask I've got a fan going because I do not have any sort of window here, but if I did, definitely crack a window. And then I have my air purifier here as well. I'm gonna crank that up onto high. So the Rust-Oleum kit comes in two different parts. You've got the part B and part A. I'm opening up part B right now. This is what's the base or the white. Um, the kit also, I think, comes in an almond color too, if you'd like, but I tend to use white. It's nice and clean. I'm opening up right now part A, that's the activator. So you're going to end up pouring A into B and stirring it really, really well. But I actually like to start out by stirring B and A separately and making sure they themselves are nicely incorporated. This is really key, paramount to getting a good glaze. Make sure these two are both really well incorporated before you get going. So right now I've got A mixed up and B. I'm pouring A into B, that's the activator, into the base and starting that stirring process. I like to stir mine really well and then I'll move on and start taping up the bathroom maybe doing some last minute prep work while that sits for a little bit. Now the box says you don't need to let it sit, but in my experience, this is my fifth bathroom doing it. I like for it to sit for about 15 minutes so that it's really well incorporated there. This is a great time to tape off any of your fixtures. If you're not doing your bathtub, you could tape off your bathtub like you see here. Um, tape anywhere that your tile meets your wall, for instance. Um, anything that you don't wanna have covered in tape. You can see I'm also kind of using my turtleneck as a mask, but I do recommend using an N95 mask whenever you are doing the glaze. It does smell quite bad. All right, so here I am still stirring. You want it to look like paint, okay? And this is a big issue. Actually, I, it looked well incorporated, but as I got going with this round, I noticed that it really wasn't that incorporated. A quick way to kind of know that that's going on is as you're doing this, if it looks too watery, then it's probably not ready yet. You kind of want it to look like paint, like true paint. And so looking back at this right now, I knew that it was a little too watery, that that activator hadn't been incorporated well enough. Um, so, but the good thing is that you can go over it with your second coat and it should be fine. So here it is. This is me up applying it onto the wall. Um, you can kind of see it's basically going on just like paint. Um, nice tip here, what I've learned is only pour out a little bit into your paint tray at a time. That way, um, seal up the rest of it in the can so it's not having all that additional fumes um, into the room. Basically just use what you need at that point. So I'm rolling it on here. It also kind of helps to have a little paintbrush on hand to paint it into your corners. You might want a couple of those chip brushes because they too, do tend to stiffen up pretty quickly as you're doing this. But I'm just using a four inch foam roller. You can find these at the hardware store. I've even seen them at Dollar Tree. Um, really doesn't need to be anything fancy, but you do want foam. Um, I've never used anything with a nap on it before. All right, here's a little bit of a 
closer shot you can see the difference here too between what was white tile and what is the rust-oleum white it is a very very bright white now i've glazed over pink blue yellow beige i think this is my first time glazing over a white bathroom with a decorative border but for this one, I ended up only using one can, but I could probably have used a second just to go over another coat, maybe three coats. So, and also kind of because it is white, I probably didn't need as much, but you might need more depending on the color. Okay, if you are painting and you are seeing these kinds of things happen, what that is a sign of is that your activator and your base were not incorporated enough. And a quick way to spot that is when you're pouring it into a tiny paint tray, if you see any of that clear activator resting on top of your base paint, it was not incorporated well enough. So the good news is that you can wait a little bit, keep mixing, mix that solution, mix the base and the activator, continue to do that for probably 15 minutes, I'd say, and then you can go over those spider webs and it should be fine. This is really how you want it to go on, sort of thick, just like paint. If you're seeing a lot of runs, if you're seeing a lot of bubbles, I would pour it back into the can and mix it all up again. It should go on like this, just like you are rolling paint. All right, another little thing that I like to have on hand are a series of painter's brushes, like just little artist brushes in case you have small spots like Here's the top of the tile where it meets the wall. You know, your rollers kind of can't get in there. So I'm just using something I got. Uh, it was like a set at Michael's. Just a nice little artist brush to use here for small spots. All right, guys, here is the finished product. I'm so pleased with how this turned out. I love the white of the Rust-Oleum. It's so fresh and clean. I think it's great, too. If you've got tile like this halfway up the wall, try to pick something that's similar to the white. It's just going to make the room feel taller and bigger. So I ended up doing two coats. I only needed one can to do this. Honestly, probably could have done a third coat, so probably do two, buy two cans of this if you have a similar size room. Um, you can kind of go over it later if you need to. Really pleased with it, guys. I think this is such a fantastic product. This is my fifth bathroom I've done it in. It should me should last me definitely on the walls for a few years. Tubs, you kind of have to touch up maybe once every two years, but they sell a touch-up product for that as well. So hope this helped you. Um, be sure to hit follow for my YouTube channel and follow me on Instagram.